This video, we're delving into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping project. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Porgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portalhorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, structures observed in leaked material from Port Gorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the stockyard and crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. Formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar game's title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font, leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mall's name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one, and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift 
our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the mapping project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's delve into a significant discovery. An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA V said might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway. Specifically, the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress, hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 1, 97. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 1, 97 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotchgrab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This, to me, indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing increasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 4042 could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter, similar to GTA 5. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA 5, the Loop Highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possessed distinct names and numbers, 
even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a loop highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. One, 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. One, 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. Whether that point is a city, a smaller town, or something else that is still unknown. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments regarding everything covered in today's video, particularly this astonishing discovery. There's substantial evidence hinting at a larger map size. We're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain's surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crazy on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System. This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. 
players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion. This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. Share your thoughts on everything covered in today's video in the comments below.